Hey everyone, my name is Daisy. I'm the founder and CEO of Banish. And today I wanted to do a review on Dr. Dre's video on microneedling. Um, you guys know I've had Banish for 11 years now. We're celebrating our 11th birthday next week. I've been working on microneedling devices for over 15 years. And I love doing reaction videos to any kind of content on the internet about microneedling because I can offer a different perspective as somebody whose full time like 60 plus hour week job has been based on developing and creating these devices. So at Banish, we're mostly focused on creating the best, the safest at home microneedling device possible uh, because it has truly changed my life and my skin. I am 36 years old and it, it is the one thing that has done wonders for my skin. I wanted to create a device that would help others achieve the same result as well. So without further ado, I have done another review video on Dr. Dre's uh, warnings and the dangers of microneedling. And I was actually very pleasantly surprised to see her do kind of another video on microneedling. And her opinions seem more favorable in this video. So I really commend Dr. Dre for, you know, having maybe a different perspective or, um, you know, being flexible with kind of the opinions sometimes, okay? And I also did a, re uh, a reaction video to her video. Um, I'll link it down below. You can watch it here on kind of her first microneedling video. Yeah, because today we're going to be talking all things microneedling. I'm going to be explaining what microneedling does and all the benefits it can offer. What exactly is microneedling? Well, it's a procedure that involves devices that have these sharp, thin, needle-like tips that puncture the skin at a very specific depth and essentially elicit a controlled form of skin injury. While that may sound like, oh my gosh, it's actually a good thing because it leads to healing and remodeling pathways in the dermis, which is the deeper part of the skin that ultimately stimulate new healthy collagen production as well as elastin production, essentially for skin rejuvenation purposes, for improving the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines through collagen induction. But it has since grown in popularity as a treatment modality for a wide variety of different skin conditions, especially those where the underlying root cause pathology resides in the dermis. For example, microneedling is actually pretty helpful for improving acne scars as well as other types so i just want to say that i believe banish since we launched over 11 years ago or i created banish um, for acne scars because i couldn't find a way to remove my acne scars or at least help my acne scars without having to undergo lasers and i actually can't do lasers because my skin is a little bit of like a brown more olive skin tone so I actually had a uh, family friend doctor tell me about microneedling and at first I was so hesitant to do it or to try it and um, because I thought it was super scary like these big ass needles in my face. No, thank you. Um, but when I tried it, it changed my life because for the first time in my life, I got positive compliments from people. My I felt so much more confident. Um, the scars on my skin just kind of smoothed out, ironed out. I still have scarring. My skin is not perfect, but it's so much better than it was before. And I just knew right then and there that I needed to create a brand and a company that made my microneedling accessible to the masses. Because for a laser treatment, it's thousands of dollars, right? Professional microneedling is, you know, $500, $700. Um, the Banish kit we sell for $125, which includes a vitamin C serum. And it comes down to like five dollars per use so i really wanted to like scream at the top of my fingertips and tell people about this but i knew i couldn't do it in a way where traditional microneedling products came out i couldn't um you know i couldn't sell these scary rollers like nobody would do that right to their skin so i really created a brand and a story and um a product that was accessible right and that was friendly and non-invasive even though it is invasive so um, I'm so happy that microneedling is a lot more popular and I truly believe Banish has a lot to do with it. Um, so you're welcome. <laughs> types of scars. Microneedling is pretty useful in improving the appearance of stretch marks, likely because stretch marks essentially are a form of a dermal atrophy, loss of the supportive framework deeper down in the skin through rapid stretching forces. Microneedling is also very useful. 
So I actually, um, I gained 50 pounds uh, in my first pregnancy with my daughter and I did not develop a single stretch mark. I used the vitamin C, the Van Vanish vitamin C serum. Um, but I also did microneedling, <laughs> like just with a 0.5 banisher. And I swear it really helped with preventing of stretch marks because what happens in stretch marks is it comes when your, your body is growing faster than your skin can produce the collagen. So um, that's why you tend to get stretch marks like where there's high growth, right, areas. And that's why a lot of women get it on their bellies. Um, so I'll put a picture maybe here about like what my belly looked like throughout the process. But honestly, other than my belly button, you cannot tell I had a child. And, you know, part of it is genetics, but I truly believe a lot of it was just taking care of that area. Now I'm currently pregnant with my second daughter and I am using vitamin C and I will be microneedling. Um, and it's definitely safe to use during pregnancy. Definitely do not do like a really large needle, but a very small, minimally invasive needle can really help the stimulate collagen around the skin there. And I just want to say that stretch marks is a very, very difficult thing to treat because the, the thickness of your, the skin in your body is actually thicker than on your face. So you need to produce significantly like more collagen there. So if you, let's say you're not pregnant, right? Let's say you're not pregnant or you're postpartum or whatever, you can use like a thicker needle to get rid of stretch marks or try to minimize the appearance of it. Uh, but when you're pregnant, definitely like don't use, don't, don't get that needle to the baby. Okay. <laughs> useful for different hair loss disorders by stimulating these healing pathways it may help in bringing in nutritive and growth factors to the hair follicle to recover healthy hair growth. Some even are able to get good success treating axillary hyperhidrosis, which is a fancy medical terminology for excessive sweating under the arms with microneedling, probably because it has the potential to target the deeper layers of the skin and potentially the sweat. Gland. Microneedling also is pretty useful for improving various types of hyperpigmentation, such as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. But the benefits of microneedling don't stop solely at improving these skin and hair disorders, but rather microneedling can be a way to enhance penetration of topical medications or active skincare ingredients. One you may have heard about is a lot of people utilize microneedling to enhance delivery of the hair loss medication minoxidil and so as you guys know from my videos on minoxidil if you've ever watched them or any of my hair loss videos minoxidil is a well-established treatment for certain types of hair loss however not everyone responds well to it this may be for a variety of reasons but some people get better results when paired with microneedling likely because of a combination of microneedling's effects on stimulating healing pathways alongside the fact that it allows for better penetration into the follicle with my Microneedling, you essentially bypass. So it seems like microneedling is a cure all for everything. It seems like hair loss, sweaty armpits, stretch marks, acne scars, collagen boosting, fine lines and wrinkles. She is the golden child, okay? the stratum corneum, that thick waxy outer layer, and allow access directly to the dermis where the blood vessels are located. There are actually quite a few different microneedling devices available, different lengths of needles that access different depths and are better indicated at certain locations. In addition to that, microneedling devices can be combined with other skin rejuvenating, skin treating technologies such as radio frequency. The the advantage of pairing microneedling with radio frequency is that radio frequency is a type of energy that essentially heats the deeper layers of the skin to stimulate healing pathways. And this energy extends below the tip of the microneedle. So you get not only better improvement in terms of collagen and elastin production, but you also get a subtle skin tightening effect, which is desirable for a lot of people seeking Okay, so I just want to say the radio frequency and microneedling can be controversial. There is a plastic surgeon here who says that the radio frequency would paired with microneedling is not recommended because it actually melts the fat on the skin. Okay, so you have to be careful when microneedling with radio frequency because if it goes too deep into the skin, and again, your skin is only like 1.3 millimeters thick. Um, 
it will melt the fat because the fat is underneath the skin. And I say melt the fat in the belly. Let's not, let's try to keep it here, okay? Speaking rejuvenation. Not only that, radio frequency microneedling has been shown to be pretty helpful actually for treating various acne scars. In addition to being helpful for acne scars, it essentially exhibits a thermal inhibitory effect on the sebaceous oil gland leading to a reduction in sebum, aka oil, which is a big player in acne pathogenesis. Microneedling is also combined with different LED therapies such as blue light for the treatment of acne and red light for further photobiomodulation to trigger. So it's good. It's good. It can actually reduce sebum oil, which can actually help with acne because acne is caused by a lot of times by an overproduction of the sebum oil, which is a big player in acne pathogenesis. Microneedling is also combined with different LED therapies, such as blue light for the treatment of acne and red light for further photobiomodulation to trigger collagen production, anti-inflammation, as well as healing pathways. Now, I have a lot of videos on photobiomodulation, but you can imagine that when paired with microneedling, it may potentially offer even better results. What are some advantages specifically with regard regards to microneedling? Well, first of all, it's actually a pretty safe procedure overall with a very low risk of adverse effects. Maybe some discomfort, although that will depend on the location and the depth of needle. Also, it's a pretty low risk for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It's a cost-effective intervention for a variety of skin issues. It doesn't take that much time to perform. It can be done in office, so it doesn't require you to go to the OR or anything complicated like that. It's also a suitable intervention for those who have very sensitive skin that's prone to irritation, as well as areas of the skin that are more delicate, such as around the eyes. It's even been investigated as a treatment for rosacea. It may stimulate some anti-inflammatory pathways that are helpful for reducing rosacea severity. But more recently, that's actually amazing because we have so many customers who email us saying can use this for, ros for rosacea. So now I know like, yes, it can help those with rosacea. So what does a microneedling treat? Can microneedling cure cancer? Because um, I would like to see that happen. <laughs> Research, of course, is needed. But microneedling is not all sunshine and rainbows. There are contraindications, basically situations or groups of people for which microneedling is not a good idea. Number one is if you have an active acne breakout, probably not a great idea to be dragging this tool across the surface of the skin. It likely can't aggravate existing breakouts. Number two is if you're someone who deals with herpes cold sores. And again, this is why in the Banisher 3.0, I created, because I've been doing this, you guys, for 11, 15, a long time, years. Um, I created the Banisher 3.0 so you can go around the active acne. I didn't want anyone to be dragging or rolling no acne around their face. Especially if you have an active herpes outbreak because if you microneedle in the area, viral particles can be introduced into those little puncture wounds and you can get a more serious skin infection that requires antiviral medication to treat. You would also wanna avoid microneedling if you have Okay, um, so if you have a herpes, okay, so most likely most of us do not have herpes on our face, on our skin. If you do have herpes, it would be around like the cold sore area, right? So I get cold sores um, all the time, especially now I'm pregnant. <laughs> um, and I always know that when I have a cold sore outbreak, I do not like go right here. Uh, I'll just go like around the area. So yes have warts. Now, when you think of a wart, maybe you think of the bottoms of your feet, your hands, your fingers, but it's actually not uncommon to have warts on the face. Little flat warts, especially in the beard area, they get inoculated there as the razor from shaving is dragged across the skin surface. So if you go microneedling, well, you could potentially get more extensive warts distributed across the skin surface. While microneedling is a great option for treating various different types of scars, if you have a history of forming keloid scars, it's not a good idea to do microneedling. If you have an active, poorly controlled, chronic inflammatory skin condition, such as atopic dermatitis, other types of eczema, or psoriasis, microneedling is probably not in your best interest. I've mentioned this before anytime I talk about psoriasis, but it is a condition that exhibits something known as the isomorphic response, otherwise known as the Kebner phenomenon, wherein if you have any form of skin injury, I mean, we're talking just scratch 
touching your skin even. It will actually elicit more psoriasis. So as you can imagine, you know, controlled wounding of the skin is not a good idea with. So I actually have psoriasis too, uh, because God loved to give me every skin condition. And, um, but my psoriasis isn't on my face. Usually it's on my legs and my arms sometimes. And it's true, the more I scratch, the worse it gets, <laughs> but I can't help scratching. And now it's been like this weird tick that I do where like if I'm nervous or anxious, I'll just start scratching, which is really bad. But yeah, I don't microneedle there with psoriasis. If you have underlying immunosuppression, poor wound healing, you're on chemotherapy or you're undergoing radiation therapy, it's not a good idea to pursue microneedling in these situations where you have overall poor healing due to either your immune system or for example, radiation treatment. Now with microneedling, it does create some pinprick bleeding because it is causing a controlled form of skin injury in the deeper layers of the skin where the blood vessels reside. If you have a problem with clotting, you bleed easily, or you are on anticoagulation, basically medicines that... So with the Banisher 3.0, you don't need to worry about that. You shouldn't bleed with the Banisher 3.0 because it is at a 0.5 millimeter depth. So there's not going to be any blood or bleeding or any of that. And yes, 0.5 millimeter needle is actually more effective than a two millimeter needle. I have a whole nother video about that, why the length of the needle isn't um, as important as people may think. Actually, 0.5 millimeters is the best for collagen induction therapy. Again, my other video will be linked below or you can click here if you want to see more about that that thin your blood, it may not be the best idea to have microneedling treatments done. While microneedling is generally safe, it can go awry and there can be unfortunate complications with microneedling, whether it be a garden variety microneedling or microneedling with radio frequency, you name it, you can have some adverse effects. So one of the more common adverse effects that many people experience, most people I would say, is redness irritation. Fortunately, that's temporary it only lasts a few hours. Now you can also have some peeling, flaking of the skin because it sort of exfoliates to a certain extent and that may last a couple of days after you've had microneedling. For the most part, that's about it in terms of adverse effects, although there are a whole host of other adverse effects that happen in rare circumstances. For example, you can have it trigger reactivation of herpes virus and give, again, a more extensive herpes viral infection of the skin. That's quite serious. You can also have a skin infection. I mean, you're causing little... Okay, so of course, nothing you do in life is without risk. Um, again, I always say like cutting vegetables, you could cut your finger off, right? You got to be careful. But the probability of these happening is very, very small. And for me, I feel like the positives of microneedling outweigh tremendously any of the negatives. For example, the herpes virus thing, like how many of us have herpes on an area we're trying to microneedle, right? And if you do have cold sores, you go around there or you like use a stamping device so you don't roll around there. So um, I think it's just important to know that any skincare product you use, there's going to be risks. And I think microneedling, honestly, is way safer than lasers, way safer than any chemical peel. In fact, I think it's safer than a glycolic acid peel. I said it, it's safer than that because I've had glycolic acid peels done and it's literally burned off my skin. And it was just like a really bad experience with microneedling, especially with using a Banisher 3.0 where the needles are only like 0.5 millimeters. The only thing that you will get is like some redness to the skin. But other than that, like there's not going to be any peeling or bleeding or whatnot wounds to the skin. Now I've mentioned this before, but a lot of people carry sta certain strains of staph bacteria naturally in their nose. They're colonized with it. And so if you are having microneedling done in the area, it is possible that you introduce that staph bacteria into the area that was treated and you get, well, impetigo, which is a type of skin infection. It's possible that microneedling aggravates any underlying acne. You develop some breakouts. Hyperpigmentation. So in in my previous video, video based on the um, article written by Horst Leibel on microneedling, the stratum corneum closes within 15 minutes of the microchannels opening in the skin. So the risk of infection is actually very rare because your skin like closes up pretty quickly, like a Vetus flytrap. It just closes up, right? Um, let's say you do have this staph bacteria. You, I, I don't know. Maybe you would know it. I, I actually don't know what this bacteria is. 
I'm not too familiar with this one, but I would assume you would know that you are a carrier of this or you have an infection in your nose. So maybe you just don't microneedle around that area and or what I do is I actually put Neosporin in my nostrils when I fly because that actually helps um, me not get like dirty airplane um, air. I don't, I don't know if it works or not, but you could also try to put Neosporin in your nose. Okay, I do that. I put like Neosporin and petroleum jelly in my nostrils every time I fly. Patient <laughs> is pretty uncommon, but it is technically a possibility and is probably even a greater risk if you are pairing microneedling with radio frequency. Depending on what topicals you apply and how soon after the treatment you apply them, it's possible to have an adverse reaction, either excessive irritation due to the now enhanced penetration of those topicals Topicals, or you actually can develop what's called a foreign body granulomatous reaction if they penetrate too deeply. This has actually been observed in people attempting to do at home microneedling, the development of little foreign body granulomas. In rare circumstances, you can develop what's called tram tracking. These little... So granulomas, I already did a video reacting to Dr. Dre's first microneedling video, um, if you want to watch that. And I also did a video about actually what happened during the granuloma case. So these patients who got granulomas, um, they actually got it done at a med spa and they used a specific serum that actually caused an infection and caused a granuloma. And then another person who did roll, she rolled it over like somewhere where she had an infection or shingles, I believe. She had an infection and then she rolled on her face that developed, you know, crazy things. Uh, but the cases of this is very, very rare. So don't think that vitamin C causes granulomas. Um, don't think that, you know, like it's common to get granulomas. It's honestly, make sure you're using something on your face that you trust. Um, don't just use like a random skincare serum for the first time um, because you might be allergic to it. And obviously, obviously, you know, if you have any kind of issues, do not microneedle over there. Bumps in, well, what looks like tram tracks uh, in the area treated. That's a side effect that can happen if the microneedling device is used with the wrong depth of needles or you press too firmly during the treatment. You also can be allergic to materials in the needle. So the tram track scarring is definitely avoided with the Vanisher 3.0. Um, I've tested this on a banana. It is the thinnest needles out there in the market. And you do want to use a very, very thin needle because the thicker the needle, the more likely it will cause scarring on the skin. Remember, the reason why you have acne scars is because that cystic acne like popped your skin, right? Um, and your skin is healing it, but it's not going to be even. So you want to use the thinnest needles possible. And the Banisher 3.0 definitely does have the thinnest needles on the market, but it is impossible to do tram track scarring with this. And this is why I have spent 11 years creating devices like these to make it foolproof for anybody. The needles, and that likewise would cause a pretty serious skin inflammation, irritation, and aggravate things. Now, it's best to see a qualified healthcare professional for administering microneedling. However, you also can buy a microneedling device at home. They have a variety of different types of devices. Many of these, honestly, probably are helpful for exfoliating the skin. The needles don't often and penetrate to the appropriate depth to get that collagen induction ultimately helping with things okay so dr dre i hope you're watching this because there's been so much research done um and also dr abby waldman who we work with who is assistant professor of derm at harvard university um says that 0.5 millimeters is actually the best length for collagen induction therapy so there's been a lot of research done and um, they did a 0.5 millimeter uh, length needle versus a point, uh, two millimeter needle. And they actually found better results with the 0.5 because they say that a collagen induction only starts like it starts at 0.6 and above. It doesn't go below 0.6. Our skin is only like a millimeter thick y'all. So 0.5 is all you need. It's a big misnomer. I'm really trying to spread, like trying to tell y'all the truth, but, uh, I realized to tell the truth and to get people to listen, you need a ton of money and as a small business that's been operating for over 11 years, you know, I, I need y'all's help to like spread the truth. Okay. Like I can't pay these derms and like take them to Paris and like wine and dine them. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> we're not owned by a major corporation. Okay. <laughs>
things like wrinkles, fine lines, and essentially rejuvenation. But they may help with exfoliating. Now you can buy devices that do get to that depth. However, I do caution against using that. A lot of adverse effects are seen with people doing it themselves at home. For example, there are infections. And whenever I point this out, I will often get comments of people saying, well, yeah, if you don't clean the device properly, of course infection is a risk. But you can clean the device and it can be super clean and you're still at greater risk for infection in that area. Um, especially if, like I said, you are prone to cold sores or you have um, staph bacteria in your nose that could lead to. By the way, if your child is four years old, have them watch Alpha Blocks. I just found it. It like teaches your child how to spell and read and she loves watching it. So I'm like, watch as much as you want, as much screen time girl as you want to impetigo. So it's definitely not something I recommend doing at home, but a lot of people do. And you know, it's one of those things where many people will do it and have no problem doing it, but the risks are there. The risks do pop up doing it at home. So obviously I'm not gonna recommend people do it at home. Those risks not only include infection, but you also have the risk of a granulomatous reaction, a foreign body granuloma, which can- Okay, so I've been in this business for 11 years we have sold hundreds of thousands I don't even know if it's in the millions yet um, we have not had one person come after us for causing any kind of issue with their skin the worst thing that people have said is that the product doesn't work which obviously if you have really deep acne scars like you know you need like subcision you need like surgery to get rid of them like like it's not gonna work for every type of acne scarring but honestly that's the worst that's happened so I would say in the 11 years, the risk has been almost zero. And I just want to qualify this because I think everyone has a different risk tolerance. And every single day we take a risk, y'all. Like you get in your car, that's risky. You know, like you get in your car, you go to a party, you walk outside. Like there's different levels of risk to everything. And I think microneedling at home, especially with the Banish kit, near zero, to be honest near zero we also offer a 45 day money back guarantee so if it doesn't work for you you can send it back and i've always um i've always prided myself and like not taking people's money if it doesn't work because i i've had acne all my life i've had every kind of skin issue and i know what it feels like to spend tens of thousands of dollars on things that don't work for your skin so yeah i think the risk is almost 0.00001 certainly happen. I've seen that myself firsthand from people doing microneedling at home. So another reason why I caution. And yeah, I understand that Dr. Dre has seen like the worst maybe case scenarios of microneedling, which has, um, you know, which gives her the perception of what microneedling is. Obviously, you're not like, <laughs> obviously, you know, these people probably used a derma roller with like really, really long needles, didn't read the instructions whatever, right? Um, but with the Banisher 3.0, it was really my goal to make it foolproof. So here you clean it in the cap here with alcohol right here. And then you can always replace the needle heads here. And then the needle heads are a 0.5 length, which is research to be the best length for collagen induction therapy. And the needles are the thinnest on the market. And again, it took 11 years to develop this. So it's pretty safe against it. All right, guys. So that's what I wanted to talk about today with regard. Okay. So thank you, Dr. Dre, for doing this video. Um, I'm really happy that it seems like your outlook on microneedling has changed. And I just truly believe that there is this like more widespread, um, more positive perception of microneedling because I have told you, I've tried almost every single product out there. I've struggled with every single skin issue. I've had the worst acne, worst acne scarring, and microneedling is by far the number one thing that has helped my skin. And when I discovered how amazing microneedling was, I couldn't believe it wasn't mainstream. And I wanted to create it mainstream, right? And so that's why I started my Banish business in 2013. Uh, because even I, so desperate, was so scared to try microneedling because I was like, I don't want to use those big ass needles. I don't want to put that roller on my face. And it only took me until my last desperate attempt 
in which um, a family friend doctor told me about how great it was, that it truly changed my life. So thank you so much, Dr. Dre, for bringing this information out to people. And um, I truly hope that if you are suffering with scarring and if you are down in the dumps and if you you know, feel like acne scarring has taken a toll on your confidence. I just want to tell you that I completely understand and empathize with you. And even at almost 36 years old, I still struggle with, you know, my skin and my like, you know, scarring and just, just things like, you know, we have to deal with, with like skin, whether it's acne scars or it's now like I'm in that age where it's like, I have to be concerned about fine lines and wrinkles. And I just feel like you could never win. So I totally get it. And I feel for you. And, um, I just wanted to create a safe, affordable, effective at home solution for anyone to use. That would be completely foolproof. So thank you very much for watching and please watch the other videos. And if there's any other videos you'd like me to do on a uh, reaction of microneedling, let me know. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.